church and uh, all of us who have found an opportunity to come at this blessed Wednesday evening for so that we may meet our Lord and all the viewers that are at home and wherever you are, you are welcome to this uh, short period of sharing the word of God. Song 425, uh, uh, the composer of this song is called John Sweeney. John Sweeney could have gone through the book of Revelation chapter 7, 9 onwards. And uh, these are the words, verse 1. There is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. Where the angels sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne, their sweet harps are ever tuneful and their voices always clear. Oh, that we might be more like them while we serve the masters here. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we glorify thy name for having given us the life today that we may continue living. And as we want to share thy word this evening, may you come down so that you may speak to us, for I pray in Jesus' name. What I want us to share this evening is the power of salvation. The power of salvation. This power of salvation can be experienced here on earth or it will be experienced finally when we get we all get up to heaven let us consider the book of esther and uh, we want to look at uh, the short experience of mordecai mordecai experienced the power of salvation when he least expected it now uh, i'm not going to go we are not going to go word by word but because of mordecai mordecai we are told that he used to sit at the king's gate the bible is not very clear what mordecai was doing daily at the king's gate but we can easily tell that it was not such a good experience sitting at the king's gate each and every day. I always look at the women that sit at the gates, the gated communities. They always sit there so that they can wait for any good thing that comes from uh, the community so that they can get uh, their daily living. Or our young people or even the old people that go to companies and sit by the gate, if in any case they are lucky, they can be picked so that they can go and do some casual work and get something to feed their family come evening. So the experience at the gate is not always very uh, pleasing. At the gate, there, are no, there is no shade, and when it rains, it will rain on you, and when, it is, uh, when the sun is hot, you will have to uh, bear the, the scorch, the scorching heat of the sun. This is what I tend to uh, think that Mordecai went through all the period that he sat at the king's gate. Now, the climax of him sitting at the king's gate was to come in this manner. This is how it was, come, it was to come, the climax. If you read Esther chapter 5 verse 14, the Bible says that his wife, Zeres, that this is the wife of uh, Haman. Uh, Haman had just been promoted to a higher rank by the king. And uh, he was, he became proud and he wanted everybody to worship him, including Mordecai. And Mordecai could hear none of that because even though he was suffering, but he could not follow it could not, he could not bow down to
to worship uh, uh, a creature, a creation like him, it was he knew very well that it is only God to be worshipped. And therefore, um, he felt bad. Haman felt bad that Mordecai could not bow when he passes the way others do. And therefore, being disturbed, he sought um, advice from his wife and all his friends. And this is what his wife and his friends told him. That have a gallows built 23 meters high and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then go with the king to the dinner and be happy. And this suggestion delighted Haman. Now the, the irony here is that uh, these people feel that after one has been, um, after one who is helpless has, has, has been uh, hanged, then somebody can be happy. This is what was to be the climax of the life that was that Mordecai was leading while seated at the gate. But to the surprise of Haman, the next day when he went to the king to ask the king so that Mordecai could be hanged, this is what he met. And when you read chapter 6, verse 10, the king tells Haman these words. Go at once, the king commanded Haman. Get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai, the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have, reco anything you have recommended. In other words, Haman, the king asked Haman what can be done to the one the king delights to honor. And Haman, thinking that he was the one that was honored that period, he suggested that a king's robe be, uh, this, such a man be dressed in a king's robe, and then uh, he's made to ride on a king's horse, and then he's around the palace and everywhere within that town so that people can know that that is what is done to the man that the, the king delights to honor. To his amazement, these things were to be done to Mordecai the man that he had planned to, uh, to hang that very morning. Now, this is where Mordecai now comes to experience the power of salvation unexpectedly. Mordecai is dressed in the king's robe and is made to ride on the horse back of the king. I tend to imagine that these are this music and there are even soldiers that are head you, you just imagine a procession of the king and there's that loud music people are cheering up and this one catches even the attention of the community and people come out to see what is happening. What is this unannounced uh, jubilation? Then the words, the words of the king are very clear. Haman was to tell the people that this is what is done to the, for the man the king delights to honor. Everybody was amazed because they could see the horse of the king, but the one who was seated on the king's horse is not the king. And so, people needed an explanation for this. Is this not Mordecai, the one who has been sitting at the king's gate? And therefore, an explanation was needed. And that explanation was, this is what is done to the man the king delights to honor. The king delight, was delighted to honor Mordecai because of what he had done what he thought had no value. He had done something before. He had, he overheard some gatekeepers that were planning to kill the king. He went and informed Esther and through this, all this information reached the king and these people were killed. And that was put in the record. Now here on earth, every little Every little good thing that we do, they are in the records of heaven. 
These things are in the records of heaven. And one time, here on earth, you will feel or you will experience the power of salvation when the king comes down to honor you. Now, when the power of salvation comes to a person, you become, you, you become a different person. And people cannot even uh, try to explain what is happening. Because things change. If we read uh, the book of John, the book of John, there is this man that is born blind and then he is healed by Jesus. Then all of a sudden, he is seen walking and he can see. People are amazed. In fact, uh, uh, the Bible, some people, this is what uh, this is what he says. That there is John chapter 9 verse 8. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he was. They were not even sure. But others, no, he only looks like him. When, the, when salvation comes to an individual, then that power changes you. And you become something else that even man cannot explain. People cannot explain what happens to one who experiences the power of salvation. This is what, the ma what this man had to tell the Pharisees. That is verse 25 of chapter 9. He replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. He is celebrating. Others cannot, uh, cannot explain what happens. But for him, he, has, he knows what salvation has brought by, um, by his door. Now, let's go back to the book of Esther. When earlier on, the wife of Haman and his friends had advised Haman that Mordecai is to be hung. And that was to be the climax of the suffering that Mordecai was facing at the king's gate. But things change when salvation came. And so, Haman has nowhere to put his head after, after Mordecai has been honored. The Bible does not reveal anything that was spoken by Mordecai all this time that is being taken round in the king's, uh, in the king's robe and uh, at the back of the king's horse. But the same same mouth, the same same mouth that had advised Haman to go and hang Mordecai comes after Mordecai has been honored. This is what they say. That is in uh, chapter 13. Chapter 6, verse 13. His advisors and his wife Zerah said to him, Since Mordecai, before whom your downfall had started, is of Jewish origin, you cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. Who can stand against one who has been saved? No one. Because he has been given all the power, all the strength he has been given by the king. And therefore you cannot stand against him. Such power of salvation, we can experience it while we are here on earth. But the climax of everything is when we get to heaven. Revelation chapter 7, John is taken in spirit to heaven. And from verse 9 downwards, John looks 
and before him he sees a very great multitude. The description, the, the description here is that no one could number this, magni, this multitude. I imagine that these people are many. We are so many on earth, yet we, the census can still be taken in every country until we know the population of the earth. But these people, no one could number them. Maybe God himself. But no man, not even the angels, could number these people. They are many. Now, and these people, uh, we are told that they are in white robes. White robes here represent the holiness of Jesus Christ. And they are holding palm branches in their hands. And they are crying in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. These people are singing. The cry here is singing. They are singing about salvation. They are singing about their salvation. And then, there is another, that is the first choir. There are two choirs here before the throne of God. There is a choir that is made of the angels. Uh, that is verse 11. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. There is a choir that is composed of all the angels, the elders, and the living creatures. These people they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, this is what they're singing, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now, there are, there are two choirs here. There is one that is of a great multitude that no one can number, and then there is one for the angels and the elders and the living the four living creatures. I, I I really long to know what 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 these living creatures are. And this one you can only uh, get when we get up to heaven. Now, what is amazing here is that as 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 John is being taken round, he's taken round. It's like um, they they are always imagine we always go to music festival and then they are so quiet. Others are singing at that corner. This corner. So you move around and listen to them. One of the elders, of course, I believe this elder has been in the he John has just been taken to heaven. But the elder, I believe, had come earlier or he has been there before. I don't know uh, what the name of this elder is not given. The angels are singing and they sing the way we have just read. That these people are singing. The angels are singing, holy, holy is what the angel sings. And I expect them to make the courts of heaven ring. But there's another choir. There's another choir of this great multitude. When they start singing, they sing so powerfully. And what they sing make the angels fold their wings to listen to them. That is the power of salvation. The power of salvation is eventually experienced in heaven. When these people are singing about their salvation, they are singing so melodiously and so powerfully that the other choir fold their wings so that they can listen to them. Then the elder that is taking John round asks, that these people in white robes, these people who are singing powerfully, who are they? And where did they come from? Then John, John, does, John is, has, just, has just been brought to heaven. He cannot tell who these people are. But the elder, he knows very well these people. He knows them because it could be those people found them, found him in heaven. And therefore he knows them. Then John answered him, Sir, you know. Sir, you know these people. You know these people. And maybe John, John tell him that, Sir, you know them. Please explain to me. These people are singing so well. They are singing more than those who have been singing in heaven before. And then uh, the elder tells him that these are they who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night. And he sent. Uh, 
And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. That is Jesus Christ himself. And never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor rain in scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tree uh, that was shed during uh, the great suffering when they were still on earth. Now, these people are experiencing the power of salvation. The power of salvation is being experienced here, eventually. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we can experience this power of salvation while we are still here on earth. And we shall also experience it when we all get to heaven. Sad enough, there is a group. Sad enough, there is a group of people that, will exp that can experience it now while they are still alive, but they'll, be no, they'll not be able to experience it when we get to heaven because they'll not be able to go through the tribulations that, other, that this uh, multitude is going, uh, has gone through and therefore they are now able to jubilate in heaven. Now, it is my prayer and it should be our prayer, all of us, that let us seek or let us soften our hearts for the Holy Spirit for us to get this salvation that is only that only belongs to God. Because salvation belongs to God, it is only God that can give it. It is only Jesus Christ that can give this salvation. And we will experience its power while here we are still on earth even before we sleep. And we, it has been explained how we shall experience it very well in Revelation chapter 7. So let us not sleep. And let us not take it for granted for any little word of God that is being spoken. Because that is what is going to contribute to your salvation. If you want to experience this power now, then accept Jesus as your personal savior. You will experience the power while here on earth and eventually we will join as we experience this power in heaven when we all get to heaven after going through and we have uh, overcome all the trials and tribulation that are brought by the environment and what we go through in this sinful world. The song says that holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect them to help to I, I expect and I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fold their wings for the angels never felt the joys that our salvation brings. That joy is what is making the angels to fold their wings. I don't know how many um, have the urge and are li really longing to be found in this number, this great multitude, so that we can sing about our salvation. May the living uh, God, Jesus Christ, help us. Even as we are moving, we are struggling on how to maintain our righteous life so that we be straight with our God. But we cannot do it alone. We can only do it when we always walk with the Holy Spirit. Before we pray, let us just sing this uh, chorus. Holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. 
But when I sing redemption story, they will fold their wings. For angels never felt the joys that our salvation brings. Our Father in heaven, glory be to thy name. May you live forever and may you send the Holy Spirit to keep us strong in this salvation. And those who have not accepted it, may you soften their hearts so that the good words that you have put before us, the good words that we get in the holy books, the good words that we get from the evangelists and the pastors and all those who have, whom you have sent to come and speak to us, these words may make us accept you as our personal Savior so that we may all join in this chorus. We may all join in this chorus that will be joyous, that will tell the story of our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.